Hey guys, my name's Sarah. I'm a mentor here at UAW. I just finished a Bachelor of Science majoring in Medical Biotechnology. And today I'm gonna to be talking you through how to come up with an idea for your project for the UAW Science Fair, and then how to design and lay out this project. To begin with, you guys need to come up with an idea for your project. So this is when you're going to start asking the why and how questions. You might wonder why the sky is blue or why a certain plant grows in a better condition than the other, or maybe even why you have to brush your teeth every morning. All of these questions and more can be answered by science. Today, we'll also be showing you guys an example experiment. We're going to be looking at how yeast reacts in different water conditions. With your projects, this is the opportunity for you guys to be your most creative. You get to come up with a solution to a real world problem. You can look at issues that are affecting us currently, or maybe even issues that are going to affect us in the future. So once you come up with the idea for your project, you're then going to have to write a scientific procedure. So we're going to outline how to do that now. All scientific procedures start off with an abstract and introduction. From here, you'll go into your aim, hypothesis and variables. Then you'll outline your materials, methods, results, and then you'll finish off with your discussion, conclusion and references. All of these parts will combine together to create your scientific procedure. Something to note at the beginning is you do not need to come up with your title or abstract until the end of your project. Once you've completed your project, these parts will be easier to create. So your introduction is the beginning part of your project. This is where you're going to explain why you're doing your project, how you came up with the idea for your project and why it's relevant to us today. This is going to also include some background research. Your aim is what you're trying to find out in your experiment and your hypothesis is an educated guess of what you think will happen. An important thing to note here is that your hypothesis doesn't have to be right or wrong. It can be either one of these as it's just a guess of your end result. There's three different variables, the independent variable, the dependent variable, and your controlled variables. The independent variable starts with an I, so it's the one that you change in your experiment. The dependent variable is going to be the variable that you measure, and then the controlled variables are the ones that stay the same. Often there's only one independent variable and one dependent variable, and then there's going to be multiple controlled variables throughout your experiment. For an example, in today's experiment with yeast, the independent variable, the one we're changing, will be the water temperature. The dependent variable is the one we're measuring, so it's going to be the water displaced by the gas produced in the balloon. The controlled variables are going to include the amount of water we add, the amount of yeast we add, the amount of sugar we add, and the time that we let the balloons blow up. As a secondary student, you might like to make this experiment a little bit more complicated by adding more independent variables, so the ones you're changing. So next comes the materials and methods. This is where you're going to outline what materials you used in your experiment and also how you did your experiment step by step. In all scientific experiments, it's really important that you repeat your method. As a primary school student, you need to repeat your experiment at least three times to make sure that your results are reliable and accurate. As a secondary student, you might look at repeating your experiment at least five or six times just to ensure that the results are credible. Next comes your results. This is where you're going to have pictures, graphs and tables showing what you have found in your experiment. It's really important here to note that you do not need to represent your results twice. If you already have them in a graph, you do not need to have them in a table then as well. Your results is also where you're going to be able to identify trends in your experiment and do some data analysis. Your discussion is now where you get to discuss your results. You get to discuss those trends that you found and also talk about why you've come up with these results and how they're important to us in real life and possibly in the near future. You get to identify any limitations in your experiment and how you might look at improving on your experiment. Your conclusion is where you get to tie everything together. It's where you outline if your hypothesis was right or wrong and whether your results match up with this. It's okay if your hypothesis was incorrect. You just need to explain why this might have happened. Next comes your references. This is where you're going to list all of the sources you used in your background research. Whether this was in your introduction, discussion or conclusion, you just need to list all of these sources for us. Next, in your acknowledgements, you're going to be acknowledging anyone that's helped you out in your experiment, whether this was your peers, your parent, 
or teachers helping you out along the way. Now that you've completed all the parts of your experiment, you can go back to your abstract and title. The abstract is basically a summary of your experiment and everything we've just talked about so far. You can now come up with a title for your project. This can be as creative as you like it to be, as long as it explains briefly what your project is about. I hope you guys have fun creating your projects. This is really a time for you guys to get as creative as you like with science and go in as much depth as possible into a scientific area that you're really interested in. The science fair is going to be heaps of fun and we really look forward to seeing you and your projects there.